do. So tonight we heard from Jeff Lucas on healing and how God is amazing and Jesus is amazing. We're just going to interview a few people on what their thoughts and their views are on healing. Stuart, um, tell us, we heard a bit from Jeffrey tonight, um, just a wee bit on, on how God is amazing and a uh, wondrous healer. Um, well, give us a few of your thoughts maybe on what he spoke on. And yeah. um, I thought tonight was absolutely spot on, phenomenal teaching from the Word of God and communicated in a fantastic way where Jeff was open, he was honest, he was real, he said that God heals and he does heal and I believe that he heals, I believe scripture teaches he heals but he also said that there are times when maybe he doesn't and he lets people suffer but he's in control of all of that and God works his way, he has his way all of the time and all of the glory goes to him. I was really blessed by tonight and uh, I'm waiting to hear some stories of how God has moved and worked in people's lives. We're here with Dave and Willie, and uh, Dave and Willie, can you tell us a wee bit about your thoughts? Jeff Lucas spoke tonight on the Wanderers here. What was your thoughts on what he had to say? Excellent. I've been here three evenings. I uh, enjoyed his uh, humorous preaching. Um, I enjoyed his truth. He's kept it very simple, but theologians like myself can go as deep into it as we want. <laughs> but excellent. Um, great topics. Back to my here. Yeah. I thought he handled it very well. Like, <laughs> a potential name field because everyone has different opinions. Um, and he handled it very well, uh, especially like the wee bit of Church Ireland but there where we all repeated after each other. That was yes, very good. good. And the guys leading the, the, the prayer team, the, the guy at the front with a white shirt and the cool haircut, he's a really good looking I Would that be your twin brother? That's him, very much. Tonight, Jeffrey spoke on the Wonders Heater. Um, maybe you could tell us a few of your thoughts maybe on what Jeffrey said. I just thought it was really, really good. Really balanced message. Okay. And yeah, really exciting. Okay. The amazing Jesus. Okay. Um, I think the, the most important thing is to think about complete healing, you know, not just physical, but spiritual, emotional. And the amazing thing is the promise of Jesus coming back again and the promise of healing in the future. So no matter what happens, whether it's now or whether it's in five years or whether it's tomorrow or whether when Jesus comes back, people are going to get healed, people are going to get saved, people are going to be with Jesus. So it's amazing. So we're here with Jeff Lucas. We're, tonight we've um, just heard from Jeff on uh, the wondrous God and, and really the fact that Jesus is amazing and uh, looking, focusing more on healing. And we just want to have a wee chat with, with Jeff just for a few minutes, just to talk with him, find out a wee bit more about himself and um, maybe delve a wee bit deeper into the healing aspect of things. So Jeff, we really appreciate your ministry so far this week. And, thank you. Um, thank we're going to say thank you um, for, for being open to God, for being open to us. I've had a great time. It's been great. Thank you for having me. Good. Um, can you tell us just a wee bit about yourself? You've been very open, but maybe a wee bit in the background and things like uh, that. Yeah, um, uh, basically not raised in a Christian home. Uh, influenced by my RE teacher when I was 17 and got I was healed. Quite a domestic, small healing really, but it freaked me out because I'd never heard of anything like that. Went along to an Elam church, became a Christian, and very quickly, within two years, I was in Bible college. And then in Bible College planted a church in Peterborough, became the pastor of that church, got married to my lovely wife Kay, we've been married for 34 years now, and um, we have two children, they're grown up, and two grandchildren, and uh, I now am based at Timberline Church in Colorado, about a third of my year I'm teaching pastor there, one of the teaching pastors. Uh, but because that's a part-time role, it's a very large church, and that releases me to travel, write, broadcast, speak. So I broadcast on radio and TV, and do quite a lot of writing, and then do things like this as well, in my spare time. Okay. And not in my spare time, actually. Uh, but, yeah, and uh, coming back to Northern Ireland again, always had quite a lot of fun here. The Northern Irish, whenever I come to Ireland, North or South, Irish people are sort of basically addicted to fun. And okay. I think that's a very healthy thing. Okay. Really good. And we need more of it in the church. Okay. So many times you've been to Ireland, Northern Ireland? Uh, oh, dozens of times. Dozens? Okay. Yeah. And I gain weight every time I come here <laughs> because you can't have a cup of tea here without having something with it, can you? Yeah. yeah. What is, is that hospita just a hospitality thing? Yeah, you should try and be a pastor here. It's, uh, it gets even better. <laughs> How long have you been a pastor for? Oh, well, I've been in ministry for eight to nine years, so um, yeah. yeah, pastor maybe nine months or so. Something like that. You know what? 
joking aside, the whole welcome hospitality thing is so important. And I think, you know, it does lead me to say, I think that we, we kind of believe that churches grow by some kind of secret dynamic ingredient. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes we've got a revival agenda. I find myself, Stephen, these days less and less saying to people, be on the hunt for revival. If God wants to turn up with some big ignition, please God do it. But in the meantime, can we get on with the business of being kind and serving buns, nice buns with cups of tea, nice cups of tea, yeah. being welcoming, being the family of God. And I think that that's the kind of family context that the Lord will visit, yeah. rather than us, us being on the hunt all the time on blessing safari, looking for the next big move. And everybody goes rushing over there to that, rather than being in church, building church together. I said this afternoon here, we need boring churches. We need churches that can go through boring seasons where not much happens, but people are still committed to each other because they're not just committed to the excitement, they're committed to the family. You're a married man, aren't you? Yeah. I know that because the lady operating the camera is married to you. When you got married, you just didn't get married for the sunny days and the days when everything was thrilling and a new adventure. You committed yourself to the journey, the exciting days, the sad days, for better or for worse. And I think we need that in the church. Yeah. We need for better or worse churches that can be exciting and can be as dull as dishwater, <laughs> but people still hang in there. Yeah, yeah. It's so much about getting back to the core elements and yeah. the, the, the key things that are yeah. very fundamental to what church is. So and I think that that's how the early church grew. Mm -hmm. That the early church grew not just because of the spectacular, although that was part of it, but as they cared for the poor, as they reached out into their culture they turn heads and they turn hearts and it's not rocket science as they say. So um, to kind of move in there a wee bit of tonight, um, Jesus is a healer, the wondrous healer, that whole aspect of things. It can so easily be um, just a field of minds if you like in the sense of um, everybody has a view and, and there's so many extreme views. Um, from my opinion you, you taught a, a very balanced, very biblical um, view on healing tonight. Um, can you just tell us maybe a wee bit of your kind of gleanings on, on I don't know, what your views on healing and I know you've had a maybe a mixed kind of uh, experiences on healing? Well I mean I, I absolutely believe that God still heals today. The truth is he doesn't do it as much as we'd like. Yeah, certainly. Bottom line, that's the way it is. There are reasons perhaps for that. I don't know, most of the time I don't think we know what those reasons are. God doesn't always get his way. We don't live in heaven right now. We don't live in the Garden of Eden. We live on the battlefield between the two. That's why we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. And so not everything that happens is God's will in a case sarah sarah fatalistic sort of way. Yeah. But what often happens is that in desperation to see people healed, Christians run around and dump unhelpful slogans on them. You've got sin in your life, your great great granddad was into something dodgy, um, you haven't got enough faith. And it, it's, it's rather like Job's comforters showing up in a big truck. And a lot of the time this is well-meaning stuff. You know, Christians are so desperate, they feel the pain of, of others going through sickness. They want to see a solution, so they scramble around for some answers. But you see, the answers a lot of the time kick people when they're down. And when I went through a period which was nothing in terms of what people at this conference, some of these dear people have been through, I went through three, three weeks of acute sickness, which nearly killed me. That's all. 21 days, not going to make any big deal out of that, of that. But when I did, I found out that there were one or two people who wanted to shout at me because shouting would make it better. They wanted me to deny that I was sick in, as if denying it was a statement of faith. Faith is not denying something. Faith is affirming the reality of something but believing that God is bigger than reality. So when, when Jairus, the synagogue ruler, met Jesus, my daughter is, is, is ill. He gets the news, his daughter is dead. And um, 
he says to Jesus, she's dead. She's gone. Jesus does not say, don't say that. That is a negative confession. We, you've got to have faith. Jesus actually said, she's only sleeping. By that, he did not mean that she wasn't dead. Jesus used that phrase of Lazarus yeah. as well. Our friend Lazarus sleeps. And his, the disciples went, is he saying he's not dead? And then Jesus said, no, he's dead. Mm -hmm. But to Jesus, death is like sleep. Yeah. He is powerful enough and big enough to speak to death. But the truth is, Stephen, it doesn't happen as much as, it, as we'd like it to. And if that isn't true, and I could get a bit passionate about this, if, if what some of the healing evangelists say is true, then why don't they get down to the cancer ward? Why don't they go down to the children's oncology ward and start helping a few desperate three-year-olds who are facing the end of their life before they've even started? It isn't as simple as we make it, and it breaks my heart. And uh, just to wind this up maybe, I found myself tonight presumptively perhaps wanting to say to unwell people, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry on behalf of the church that we in a well-meaning way we kicked you when you were down. Yeah. And all I'm trying to do, and I love the freedom to be able to do it here, is just say it. Yeah. And just not dress it up in religious language but try and talk about these things with a biblical integrity yeah. in language that hopefully everybody can understand. That shouldn't be so unusual. Yeah. Um, and I'm having a really good time and uh, feel very, very welcomed and received here. Yeah. So thank you. Good. Maybe we can lighten it up. Weaver, can you tell us a wee bit about your hobbies? What are some of your hobbies, some of the things you like to do? Um, I'd like to be able to play golf, but I'm rubbish at it. I don't have a swing, I have a spasm, it's pathetic. Um, I actually, the last time I played golf, it was with four Japanese people who helpfully couldn't speak any English, otherwise I think I'd have heard them swearing at me. Uh, and they fled the game after nine holes. Okay. A lot of bowing, a lot of bowing, but that ended badly. I'd like to go fishing, but I'd get bored. Okay. I've got a friend who goes carp fishing and he pulls carp out of the water and it's sad really, he sits there and takes photographs of himself with gaping mouthed fish, then throws them back I and mean, he doesn't even eat them with chips, which is a bit sad too. Um, so I like, I run, okay. I hate it, been running for seven years, can't stand it. Okay, why do you do that? I have to do it, I've got, I travel a lot, um, I've travelled nearly two million miles with just one airline, so I need to stay relatively fit and yeah. try and look after myself. This stunning physique, Steve, Right. Doesn't come by accident, pal. Okay. You have to work at something as chiselled as this. Okay. Don't laugh. <laughs> so um, your wife's laughing behind the camera. Yeah. 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 That's really quite rude, really. I <laughs> have uh, a little chat about that. Yeah. But um, no. So I like to run, and I love to read, and I love to watch people. That sounds a bit weird, but I'm interested in people. I know what you mean. And yeah. so. Uh, I find these events quite energising because I meet loads of fascinating people and um, I love the church, challenging at times but I'm glad we've come in from the cold and become part of the family. Yeah. I also know that you have a keen interest in, in getting lost. Yeah, I'm lost everywhere I go, it's been sad really. <laughs> I went running in Belfast the other day and I was feeling really bold and confident, took my phone out with the demon woman in it speaks to me from the GPS and um, the the phone ran out of battery oh. and so I was lost in Belfast and do you know a number of people I asked for directions told me the exact opposite of the right way. Actually? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm quite upset about it. So um, <laughs> after we finish this <coughs> filming I'm going to go roaming the streets of Belfast and I'm going to find them. Lay hands on them? Sort them out. Yeah. 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 Jesus loves them, but right now I don't. Okay. So, um, no. so get lost everywhere I go. Um, but, you know, serious link here, I suppose. I do feel that being here this week has been part of the purposes of God for me. And um, I am really grateful for that. You know, I, I'll go back to the hotel now in a few minutes. Goodness. Tonight, I got to serve and speak to 
900, 1,000 people, yeah, whatever. And some of them have been kind enough to come up and the relief in their eyes. And I get to go back to my room tonight and say, in some tiny way, God, in tiny little way, you enabled me to bring relief yeah. and strength. And let me just say this. The Bible reveals God in the Psalms. It describes God as the glory and the lifter up of our heads. And I love that. When my little grandson stands and he's crying, sometimes I go over to him and I put my hand under his chin mm -hmm. and I gently lift up his head and look into his eyes. And God's like that. And so many Christians have been bound up and wound up by negative religion and legalism and God's never pleased with you and he's just waiting to, he's got his finger trembling on the smite button. And if you're not healed, it's all your fault. And you can't win. You know, you can read the Leviticus 20 times a morning and God's still not going to be happy. Mm. And I love to say to people, it's not like that. Yeah. The God who we serve is the running father who comes charging out of the house and collides into us or charges into us. And, and there's this fantastic collision of grace. It's good news, Steve. If you want to summarize the gospel in two words, it's good news. And so if what we say to the world is A, not good news, and B, not Jesus, it's something wrong with our message. And I, hey, I, I get to be part of that. I'm very really grateful. Yeah. Just lastly, maybe um, some of the people here have been interested in, in you as a person. Is there a couple of things that um, we can maybe pray specifically for? It with, uh, yeah, I think um, I would ask for prayer for ongoing strength and health. I, I travel a lot and I live a very busy life with a lot of deadlines. I'm very, again, I'm grateful, not whining about that, but just for strength. And just that I'll be in the right place at the right time. I mean, tonight, you know, this afternoon I decided to call my sermon The Amazing Jesus. I come in here, there's a video. They play a video. Were you responsible for that? Yeah. yeah. You were? Yeah. You chose that video? Uh, Adam as well. So. Well, it's, first of all, it was brilliant, but really well done. But in the video that you chose, you highlighted repeatedly all these scriptures on amazing. Now, see, that couldn't have been set up better if we'd arranged it. If I'd have said, Stephen, I'm going to speak on the amazing Jesus. Make a video. But you did, didn't you? Now, when you did that, it wasn't because God said, Stephen, Jeffrey's going to speak on amazing, so please make a video. But I'm standing there tonight, frankly feeling a bit tired before I got up to speak. Your video came on, and I'm like, okay, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah. We don't know it because often most of what God does, He does behind our backs, and every now and again we know this and jump up and say hallelujah. But as we give ourselves to God, whether we know it or not, we don't get an email of confirmation. God is working out His purposes. And I would like to just ask for prayer that I will not get in the way, but that I will be in the way so that God can do some more of those little moments like He did tonight where you just say, yeah, it's true. There is a God. We're not making it up. We're not deluding ourselves or making us feel better, ourselves feel better. There really is a God. And he loves us. And he's working out his purposes. Final thought. You're in ministry. To stand up and preach is a preposterous thing. When you stand up to preach, you are entering into the massive audacity of believing that you, that a man or a woman, can stand up and say something on behalf of the God of the universe. How absolutely absurd yeah. is that? Yeah. Or it's true. Yeah. And again, without overstating it, when I stood up and preached tonight, I believed that. When you made the video, you believed that. Yeah. And God's going, Hooray, a few more people were helped. Yeah. Kingdom of God comes. 
win part of it. Good news. Absolutely. Jeff, thank you for your thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Stop. The treasure is eternal.